Hi guys, Mike from Kira Vans here, doing a video on wiring up your camper van, looking specifically at 12 volt electrics and how to make those connections between your various bits of your camper van and your wire. So for example, a little distribution panel like this, you may be wondering how do I actually connect my wire onto the little terminal. So we'll, we'll cover things like that. So we'll start off maybe looking at the different kinds of connections that are available in one of these little crimp terminal sets. They're all different colors. What do the colors mean? Uh, we'll look at how to strip the insulation off a piece of wire. That's the first stage of getting your terminal on there. We'll look at how to join two bits of wire together. Um, as I said, what are the different shaped terminals for? We'll look at how do you actually crimp them onto the end of your wire as well. And then uh, we could look at how to put some heat shrink insulation tubing on to keep everything nice and safe and tidy. And we could also take a quick look at these slightly bigger connectors if you're using some chunkier wires for um, getting power to your leisure battery, for example. How are we going to get those onto the end of the wire? So there's quite a bit to cover and I'll just take it through step by step and hopefully by the end of this you'll, you'll have a greater understanding. This video probably isn't going to be much good if you're already quite experienced at this but if you're new to it um, you should find some good stuff in here. So we'll make a start and I'll give you a general overview of, of what's involved. So these crimp terminals, you probably want to get yourself a set of these. Um, this is the basic way you, you join your wires together and your wires to appliances. Now when you see in the box here we've got yellow ones, blue ones and red ones and if I just use these to demonstrate the difference in the different colors is basically to do with what size of wire you put into them. The yellow one is the biggest one, the blue one medium and the red is the smallest diameter. Now I've got some wires here um, so for example this is quite a chunky chunky wire, probably just on the limit of what this terminal can take. Um, but you can see that bit of stripped wire will, will fit in there and then that gets crimped down. And likewise, the blue ones uh, and the red ones, depending on your wire size. Um, so once you've figured that out, you, could, you will then see that within each color, we've got various different shapes of terminal. Um, so this one, for example, is called a ring terminal because it's got a little ring on the end and this would be useful if you want to put it onto a um, something threaded like that, for example. You could screw that down. That's a very secure way of um, getting a connection onto a threaded post. What else have we got? This one here is called a fork terminal for obvious reasons. And this one, um, let's just see, similar to the ring terminal, it's good for going around a screw um, connection like that. But what you can benefit from with the fork one is if you're taking these off and on quite frequently, you don't have to take that screw completely in and out every time. You can just tighten that down onto there to form the connection and then loosen it to take it off. Um, one of the most common ones that you use in camper van wiring is the spade connection because I guess they look like a little spade and we've got a male and a female side um, and they just slot in like that, friction holds them together. So for example if you've got a distribution panel you'll probably find that there's quite a lot of these male spades already on the um, your little item and then you need to get the female one uh, to slot on like that. Now just be aware you do get different sizes of these. Some of these are bigger and some of them are smaller. Um, so just make sure you match that up correctly. And then these ones are called butt, no they're not, they're called bullet um, connectors because this is shaped like a little bullet and again you've got a male and a female side. These are pretty useful if you've got a connection where you want to be quite easily unplugging it and plugging it back in again um, rather than 
the final one which is uh, just this little butt connector here which you put a wire into each end and that's for joining two wires together um, this is one that I've already done so you crimp it and it, and it um, clamps it onto both ends but once you've done that that's irreversible without cutting the wire whereas if you use this um, you can obviously take it apart, put it back together as many times as you want. So that is an overview of what we've got here. So you've got your different colors which represent your different sizes and you've got your different ends on them. And again with the ring terminals you've got big ones, you've got little ones, so you just got to make sure you choose the right size for your particular job. Now also within this we've got insulated and non-insulated, so as you can see when this one is fully connected up, the plastic more or less covers everything. So that is very, very safe. That's not going to contact any of the metalwork in your van as it moves around. Whereas something like this, this is not so well insulated. So even when it's connected up, you've got this metal here, which could contact the bodywork of your van and cause a short circuit. So just be aware of that. There are ways around it. You can wrap tape around it if you want. So that's a quick overview of those. Let's move on now to how we go through the actual process of attaching these onto our wires. Okay, so when you've got your wire and your little terminal, the first stage, I'll just show you up close. Um, I'd really recommend getting a set of wire strippers like these. You'll save yourself an awful lot of time in the course of a conversion of a van. Um, basically you place your wire in the stripper like this. This little jaw here grabs the wire and where the blades are um, is the bit that actually strips hang on, let me get that done. Strips the wire off like that. And then it's always good practice just to twist the copper wires in your cable together like that. So I've got a blue ring terminal here. Basically you insert your wire and you want a little bit sticking out of the end just so that you know you've got, um, you've got it fully bedded in there. You could have a little bit less than that if, you, um, if you're being very picky. Next thing you've got to do is get hold of your crimping pliers, which look like this. And you'll see on these you've got a red, blue and yellow dot to correspond with the colour of the terminal or connector you are using. Now inside here, if you can see, that little bit of channel is slightly wider, slightly deeper than that. Um, and on that jaw, I'm not sure if all of these crimping pliers are the same, but you've got one dot, two dots, and a big dot there. So the terminal wants to go in like that. So the dot end is going to squash this bit of metal down and the other side won't squash the plasticky bit down so much. Um, so we feed our wire in like that. We can just see it coming through. And then we just squeeze hard on the pliers and release. And this is the end result here. So you can see that it squashed those bits of metal down which have gripped the copper wire there. Um, and you've got a nice snug fit. Always give it a, a check to make sure it's on there really, really tight. Okay, And that's all there is to putting these on. It's the same process um, for each of the three different colours. Now once you've got your terminal or your connector on there, you may want to consider getting some heat shrink sleeve on there. It helps to tidy things up. Um, it helps to cover up any excessive metal that you may not want um, to come into contact once it's on your vehicle. So you choose a diameter, let's do it on here, choose a diameter of sleeve um, that will go over it. That bit's too small, so we'll choose a slightly bigger one. Um, no, I'm just using a clear one here so you can actually see what happens. So that will go over that whole thing. You want to chop that to the right length. So we'll just cut a bit off that, like that. You feed it on, 
and it'll probably want to be about there to get it shrunk on properly. So we we'll grab our heat gun. And then you just want a steady amount of heat. And you can rotate that as it starts to shrink onto the wire. I don't want to do it too much, but as you can see, that now has formed a nice layer all the way around the wire and the terminal only leaving the metal bit exposed. This also comes in red and black and probably other colors as well. Uh, so that's how you put your heat shrink tubing on there to finish that off. And one other thing I want to show you in this video is how to join two wires together. Now, a lot of people will recommend soldering and soldering is a very good way to do it. But if you haven't got a soldering iron, haven't got any, maybe you haven't done any soldering before, uh, you can use a butt connector to do it, which I shall show you now. Let me just take a little bit more off that. So I've stripped some sleeve off both of those. Now let's grab our connector and we're going to do one end into each of these, uh, into each end of this connector. So back to our crimping pliers again, we're gonna use the red slot this time, same process. We just get it to about there, squeeze that hard. Okay, that's that one in solidly. Same on the other side. Just get that cable that wire in there, back into our crimping pliers again, squeeze hard, and that's the other side done. Okay, so that's pretty solid. As long as there's no movement in there, um, you should be okay. And you can also, you could finish that off if you wanted with a bit more heat shrink, just to tidy things up. I'll show you that one more time, because this is, very rewarding. Okay, and there we have it. So, hopefully, um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to. Oh no, there was one other thing for this video. Um, if you've got a thicker wire, let's move some of these tools out of the way. If you've got a thicker wire or cable, like a battery cable, you're going to need a much bigger uh, terminal. And that's where this set comes in. Now, if you're doing a lot of this, you would get an equivalent um, crimping plier, but for the bigger terminals. But they are relatively expensive. And if you're not going to do a lot of it, you could buy one of these tools, which is a little spring-loaded um press and you basically just whack the top with the hammer and it's the same basic process you, you strip your cable outer sleeve off feed the copper into the terminal pop it in the press and then just whack it a few times with the hammer and then you can see it's done a crimp just on a bigger scale and then you can finish it off like we have before with the heat shrink tube And that's all there is to it really. Hopefully that's been a good overview of how to do these crimp connections um, and you've now got enough information to get you started. There's lots of other resources out there on YouTube and on the web, so make the most of them and uh, good luck with your conversion. I'll see you next time. <laughs>